Hey everyone. So today we are going to be presenting on speciation in the temperate grassland. We made this presentation in this context that our group of four people, which includes Jay, Knight, Yelly, and myself, are isolated on an island of exclusively temperate grassland biome, as you can see in the picture here. So first we try to understand the environment of the temperate grasslands. Then we look at the people 500 generations later when they do not have any mutations. Then we look at the ideal human. And lastly, what will happen after 1000 generations, even though mutations are occurring. All right, so first let's familiarize ourselves with the kind of environment that we're dealing with by looking at the key environmental features of a temperate grassland. So temperate grasslands are characterized as having grasses as the main dominant vegetation. Trees and large shrubs are absent. Temperatures vary, vary more from summer to winter, meaning they have hot summers and cold winters. Summer temperatures can be well over 38 degrees Celsius, while winter temperatures can be as low as negative 40 degrees. Rainfall is moderate. The annual average is about 20 to 35 inches. The amount of annual rainfall influences the height of grassland vegetation with taller grasses in wetter regions. The seasonal drought, occasional fires, and grazing by large mammals all prevent woody shrubs and trees from invading and becoming established. Next slide. So these are the photos uh, from the members of the group. In this unprecedented scenario, these individuals are the sole founders of a new population beginning their lives stranded on an island. Over the course of this uh, presentation, we'll somewhat run a simulation on how they and their descendants gradually evolve into becoming more adapted to living in a temperate grassland. Okay, so as you can see, 500 generations later, these are the body types and these are the people that might uh, exist. They might have a body type of ectomorph. Uh, they also would have the height, which is above average, uh, which comes from the people J, Knight, and Yelly. Uh, they would also have the nose, which is like mezzarin, which all of us have. They would also have a light brown skin color and excess brown and black hair on their body. The body hair is to deal with the temperatures at night and to make sure that we can keep warm. The head hair would also be straight brown black hair. The eye color would be dark brown because that's what all that's all we have right now. And lastly, the head shape would be hypsicranic. Uh, the head is to be robust and that's why it's going to be hypsicranic. Uh, our group have selected temperate grassland that are like between the two continents, which is Asia and Europe. And a group of people we use as a model are known as Androvo to run it. This group of people are like, will be the model that we are expecting to see our 1000 generations. The physical trait of them include light brown skin, straight or wavy brown black hair, dark or greenish eye, tall mesoscalic, and have body shape of ectomorph to mesomorph. They will have mildly bracticephalic and mildly hips secrenic head shape. And the nose will position our left torhins and sometimes convex nose. The face and angle of mandible is wide and the feature of them are quite rhombus. They have a mild eye that are mildly slanting. Body hair that are relatively strong and steep forehead. Next, please. So as for the potential adaptation after a thousand generation, we make an educated guess on what trait may be uh, present on our new human. So firstly, we think they will have better metabolic system to help combat the extreme shift in temperature during rain and day. They may have an uh, increased metabolic rate to combat the extreme cold temperature during the night. They may sweat more easily to expel heat during the day or has more body hair to keep the heat in. Secondly, they can also have a change in terms of center of mass to have been running. They may have a more developed muscle mass in leg region 
I shall do also in a longer rate. So thirdly, they may have an improved respiratory system, which help them tracking long distances by increase their lung capacity. Or they can also have like different change in height to help uh, avoid predator or to easily spot predator and prey. And lastly, they may also develop some behavioral adaptation as well, such as uh, shelter and usage of five liquid temperature, use of clothing for camouflage or helping to keep warm. And they may also move in a small group of huddling for higher mobility and easier resource management. And that's the end of our presentation. Thank you for listening.